Hello whiskey friends, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. This is Mark, your host, and we are on review number 90. Today we're going to be looking at, um, well, a very interesting Japanese blended whiskey. And this one is called Nika from the Barrel. <clears throat> Nika whiskey from the Barrel. There it is. Very interesting package. Uh, it actually looks like, um, a little bit like origami, the way they folded the, the package. Very, very elegant. Very interesting, it's black. This is 500 milliliters. A little on the small side, but the price is actually not that bad. I believe it's about $60 US here uh, in Canada. I'm in Canada now, Winnipeg in fact. Um, so there we are. Let's get that poured right away. This is 50 centiliters or 500 milliliters, and it's 51.4%. It's very, very heady. And um, I'm using a Copita glass today. I actually didn't bring a Glen Cairn with me. And they're a little bit hard to find here in Winnipeg for some reason. Um, Glen Cairn people, if you're listening, there's an opportunity here. Lots of whiskey, not very many glasses going on. <clears throat> now, I've been here about a week now. And uh, it's been a while since my last review. I hope you've been patient. Thanks for waiting all this time. Uh, I wanted to really get going last week, but jet lag and uh, and family uh, comings and goings. It's it's been a little bit um, a little difficult to find the time. Even today, I'm actually stealing away ten minutes or so to get this done, and it's my mother's birthday. Mom, if you're watching, happy birthday! Uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. Now it's very aromatic. Um, I'm outside here in the backyard of my parents' house, and uh, this is where I'll be staying for the next uh, next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, to be quite honest with you, this really doesn't smell like a blended whiskey. This smell smells more like a single malt. Um, and uh, coming from Nika, what I'm smelling here, I can smell the Yoichi. And I can also smell the Miyagi-kyo that are uh, component malts in this blend. And the Miyagi-kyo distillery, if I didn't mention that in the last review of it, um, they also have a, uh, a column still uh, in the plant. Uh, so they make both uh, um, uh, pot stilled single malt as well as column stilled um, grain whiskey there uh, at Miyagi-kyo distillery. It still it has retained a little bit of that uh, gunpowdery essence uh, from Yoichi that were that I that I was very familiar with uh, when I when I smelled that for the first time, and um, and yet some sweetness there, a lot of sweetness as well. Anyway, very interesting. Let's get right into the nose, and before we do that, there'll be a short, very short advertisement right there. Welcome back. Okay, so I mentioned that it's fifty one point four percent. Uh, Color-wise, uh, I've written here, uh, it's the color of bourbon. Uh, it is a burnished copper color. I'm pretty sure that is natural. Um, it doesn't say so, but I'll just assume that it is. And 51.4%, uh, basically barrel strength, uh, give or take. Um, although they're always 51.4%, so then there must be a little bit of um, sort of... Uh, dilution that happens there to get it so uh, so perfect all the time um, and when you smell it neat it, it's not going to knock your socks off like you'd think 51.4% uh, or um, uh, what's that 51.4 one oh oh dear 101.8 proof so you you think that would really uh, uh, blow your nostrils apart but it really doesn't. It smells quite nice. There's a bit of a buttery uh, scent in there, uh, kind of like a buttered green. And uh, from my notes the other day, what I write here, uh, gunpowdery smoke, a lot of yoichi, <clears throat> some citrus, and um, when you spend more time with it, you may find, uh, like I did, some perhaps some orange uh, creme caramel, and um, it does get much, much sweeter with time. And there's a little bit of that Japanese oak, the Mizunara oak, uh, or perhaps, uh, perhaps the um, 
uh, uh, the Japanese plum um, that may also have come into play here uh, with casking um, so who knows anyway quite complex uh, very 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 elegant and as I mentioned whatever grain there may be in here is uh, certainly very well made and very very well aged all right let's get on to the palette shall we cheers everybody hmm mm-hmm I really do feel there is some of that umeshu, the Japanese um, plum wine, uh, the cask, the plum wine cask may have been involved here. Um, you get a big, big rush of sweetness, a plummy, sort of a tart sweetness. Um, and what I write here, it gets spicy, sour, and then dry. Uh, some banana, apple, and well, I don't know why I wrote this the other day, but I wrote here with a question mark, dried tomato. Um, and citrus. Hmm. Yeah, there's some sort of a. Well, we'll leave it at that. Dried tomatoes, it is. Hmm. And the finish. You've got a lot of um, dry oak tannins there. It's quite dry. Still that. Um, uh, sweet sourness, tart sweetness going on. Um, caramelized banana, I write, as well as burnt marshmallow. Not black burnt, you know, the brown burnt, if you catch it just at the right time uh, on the open fire when you're toasting your bananas. And uh, just before it bursts into flames, you get that really, really uh, dark brown uh, sort of crust that, uh, that comes all over the marshmallow. Very nice. Um, Let's put a dash of water in there. 51.4%. I think we can be fairly liberal. So I will add one, two, two like that. Probably five or six milliliters added. And uh, I have to say, I do like this glass. Uh, it, it does give off a very interesting nose. Um, it's actually much narrower than the Glencairn at the top, uh, so I think it actually channels that uh, uh, the aromatics a little bit better uh, in one sense. Although it doesn't have the bowl effect uh, at the bottom that the Glencairn does, but seems to be quite nice. Something I found in my parents' cupboard. Thank goodness they had something. Um, another glass that I picked up recently while we're waiting for that to, to mix in. Uh, this is from a company called Libby. Uh, they make all kinds of um, uh, glasses for, for drinks. And uh, this is one of the whiskey glasses that they had there. And I do quite like that as well. So we'll give that a try uh, at the end of the review. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most aesthetically pleasing shape, but it's very sturdy. You're not going to knock it over. Uh, and also, you do get a very nice uh, sort of a taper there for nosing. So. Uh, it's good it's clean <laughs> okay on to uh, Nika whiskey from the barrel uh, with a bit of water added let's see how that changes a much gentler sweetness that gunpowder uh, gunpowdery scent the, the peaty scent that I noticed uh, neat is gone and it really is very malty And something like a, I mean, there is a bourbon-esque note in there, but um, maybe without such a strongly active cask, maybe more like a, the kind of um, quote-unquote bourbon that they'll, they'll make in, in Canadian distilleries, uh, putting it into a, a, a refill cask as opposed to a brand new uh, American oak cask. Anyway, more sweetness, and I write here orange blossoms, so a bit of a floral note coming through. And um, a 
in a fruit basket with peaches and bananas and uh, and ripe apples as well dog next door barking sorry about that okay onto the palette and before that we'll have one more short advertisement right there okay welcome back onto the palette with water this is Nika whiskey from the barrel Cheers, everyone, and a happy birthday to you again, Mom. Hmm. More citrus. A lot more. And um, that green plummy note is still at the forefront as well. Um, and what did I write here? Lemon custard. Okay, very interesting. And the finish, well, how about that one? Hmm. The more I drink this, the more I like it. Quite a rush of spice at the end. Still quite dry. And uh, I write here more warmth, uh, a slight roasted grain note. The finish seems like it gets longer. Uh, sweet dryness and uh, orange, uh, dried orange with a hint of chocolate as well. And other fruits I write here, guava, passion fruit, and gala apples. So. The point is you can spend a lot of time with this one over multiple tastings and you may find yourself tasting something a little different each time. Yeah, there's a passion fruit, you know, kind of uh, uh, quenching bright sourness there. Uh, you know, the little seeds when you, when you chew on them and they pop uh, and you get that rush of uh, sourness coming from the passion fruit. So, interesting. Um, okay, now uh, let's get on to the scoring for Nika Whiskey from the Barrel. Uh, what will the score be? Well, I've broken it down uh, into in parts this time, and uh, I'll just read through those. Uh, the nose I quite like, and I'm giving this 22 out of 25. Um, I quite like the nose. It smells great from afar and even better from, uh, from up close. Uh, palette, I've given 21 out of 25. Um, well, anyway, very nice, a little bit one-sided, um, uh, but still quite quite enjoyable. Enjoyable, and the finish also 21 out of 25. Um, and I find this to be quite quite in balance, so I've given this a 22 out of 25 score for balance. So the total is 86. 86 out of 100. That's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Nika Whiskey from the barrel. Very nicely made. Uh, to the Nika people, uh, great job on that one. Hopefully uh, you can still get that here in Winnipeg. I noticed there's only one left on the shelf uh, at the local state-run liquor store. Um, if you message me, I'll tell you where that is. And I, I also noticed that this was actually imported to France before it made its way over here. So that's a little bit unusual. Uh, it's probably a, a little bit more than it should be, even though I would say it's quite a reasonable price at uh, about $60 for that one. Anyway, uh, some final notes here. 86 out of 100. Uh, malt rich blend, I write. Uh, some playful peat and uh, something else I can't read, it's not legible, sorry about that. Fruity and oaky, uh, it's quite smooth at full strength and a little different uh, with water. And uh, I write here, it's one of the best blends I've tried and quote unquote, Mr. Smooth. So that's the nickname for Nika Whiskey from the Barrel, Mr. Smooth. Uh, go out and get some, give it a try and please comment if you tried it already, let me know what you think. And uh, don't forget, you can subscribe to Whiskey Whistle by clicking the link right down there. Stay tuned for more here from Canada. Hope you like my hat. I sure do. 
finally found, found one that hit that hits that fits my small head uh, here at a place called Winners. It's I think it was twelve dollars, so quite a good buy. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you for the next episode ninety one. Oh. Oh, I forgot. I was going to make a quick little highball here. Well, highball in a whiskey glass, so not quite a highball, but throw some ice in there. Put one more in there. And we'll top it up with our whiskey. And I'm going to take the spoon, I'm going to stir it up so it gets nice and cold. Sorry for the sound. Stirred, not shaking here, guys and ladies. Oh yeah, now it's getting nice and cold. Okay, that's enough, I think. Well, we'll see how that is. That's how they drink it in Japan, in a highball glass, however, but we'll give it a try. Hmm. Very soft nose now. Okay, well, let's try it. Cheers again. It has almost a jelly-like quality to it. Um, so it gets quite thick, which is interesting. Don't forget to use more ice. Don't just use one cube. One cube melts so quickly. So put in a few. You get less melt and uh, and you'll cool it down quicker. Now let's try that again. Hmm. I think that's just great for summer. Give that a try. Let me know what you think and I will sign out one more time. Thanks everyone. Goodbye.